Welcome to UDK. In this tutorial, we will be downloading a texture from the internet and turning it into a material to be applied inside of UDK. We'll start by going to crazybump.com and downloading a copy of this handy utility. Crazybump allows you to generate maps uh, based on a texture that can be combined to create a 3D material. We'll also be downloading a texture to work with. There are many different textures available online for free for game developers. MaxTextures.com is just one of many sites that provide quality textures. And in this case, we're interested in this dirty metal divoted uh, repeating tile. It comes as 1024 by 1024, and we are going to turn it to 512 by 512 uh, not because UDK can't handle it, but because it, with many different textures in the scene, it's important to keep sizes down, especially if they're repeating. Double click on Crazy Bump, and once it has come up, drag your chosen texture onto the program, open it as a photograph, and the first thing that Crazy Bump does is generate two height maps. One is indented, the other is protruding. Choose whichever works better for the texture. In this case, we'll go with this one. The next thing you see is the normal screen and a preview. You can change the type of primitive that's being projected onto and ensure that only the options that you want to see are, are highlighted. Uh, we're just going to pump up a bunch of these uh, properties. They're worth playing with to understand exactly what works and what doesn't but for now to see the effect we'll just do that. The specularity is also the other map that we're interested in generating here but we'll leave it as is for now. Once you're satisfied with your textures save all textures and UDK needs PNG or TGA files to work. It also needs textures that are in the binary dimension and square so 256, 512, 1024 squared. Save those and back into UDK. Create a new level, this time a blank map. We'll be generating an empty room by right clicking on the cube brush and typing in 512, 512, and leaving the Z as it is. Ensure that it's hollow and click build. If it hasn't already, then click the CSG add or control A to create your room. Now go inside and add the two things that are needed to add a player. A player start and hold down L for a light. Resize the light by holding down the control button and dragging the right mouse button up until the opposite corner is just lit. We want some difference in the way the light is covered in order to see our texture at work. Okay, bring up the co content browser and click on import to bring our newly generated textures into UDK. We're interested in the color, NERM, and spec. We'll leave occlusion and displacement for now. Open them all and you'll be asked to put them in a new package. In this case, we'll put them in my metal and leave the names as is. The options down here allow some helpful things, but we will skip over them for now. OK to all creates a new package and puts the three textures inside. It's important to save the package right away. This is the only time when Control S actually does mean save, and save it in the content folder so that your work does not get lost. It will move out of new packages and into the content folder where you can click on it again to see your textures. Next we create a material to put these in. So right click in an empty space inside the package and click new material. Name it something useful. And hit OK. With this we see the material editor, editor pop up. Properties down at the bottom. 
the node map on the right and a preview screen on the left. It works a bit like Kismet but in reverse, whereas Kismet reads from left to right, everything in the material editor reads from right to left. You can turn off the stats uh, to get a better look at the node system and use the scroll wheel to scroll in or out. So we're interested in bringing in three texture coordinates. If you right or texture maps, if you right click and go down to texture, you'll see texture sample. Click on, clicking on that generates an empty one. You can then highlight one of your textures in the material editor. Go back to the texture sample and click the green arrow to fill it. Another way to bring in new textures is to drag and drop, highlight the spec map and drag it into the world, holding down control to move it around. You can also highlight both by holding down control and alt to create a bounding box. Third way to bring in a texture is to highlight the texture in the content browser and in the material editor, hold down T and click. Once we have all three of our textures inside, we can now hook them up to the appropriate channels for our material. The nodes on each texture sample indicate the different uh, color channels that can be sent out. The black indicates all four, then there's R, G, B, and A for alpha. We want everything, so we'll go from the black node of the, of the color map to the diffuse channel. And that adds our first look at what our material is going to be. To see it displayed on different primitives, click the primitives up here and use the right mouse button to zoom in and out and hold down the L and move the left mouse button to move the light source. Lighting doesn't change anything right now so we need to add the spec map which allows the material to respond to light. Drag from the black node to the specular node and you'll see the spec uh, uh, reflection appear. To get a better look at it you can uncheck the diffuse by holding down alt and breaking the node and this is what the spec looks like. The final hookup is from the normal sample to the normal channel and that adds the depth, the bumps to the material. A good way to think of it is the spec is how the material reflects light and the normal is how the material takes in light. Connect the diffuse up again for a final look. And there we have our first material. Hit the check mark to save it. Click out of there and back in the world with the material highlighted. Click on one of the surfaces of the walls, right click, select surfaces, adjacent walls or shift W right click again, apply material. Final thing to do is build lighting. You can leave it at high or production but don't use light mass. Build paths and hit F8. Here we have a look at our first material built in under 10 minutes.